just before we begin, I've actually started a new series called 5 Minute Fridays. Every Friday I release a new video on DaVinci Resolve where we spend 5 minutes looking at one cool feature within Resolve. So if you're interested in that, hit subscribe so you can catch those videos every Friday. So, 6 tips, let's go. So here we are in DaVinci Resolve and the first thing we're going to have a look at is on the media screen. Now in the far left you should see your media storage panel. Now you should see something similar to this. I've got three drives. So I've got a C drive, a D drive and an F drive and I've also got the My Videos folder. Now when I import my media off my memory card I put it in a particular folder. So if I'm trying to retrieve that folder I have to go to the D drive DaVinci and then media and then everything I need is in there. Now what you can actually do is essentially set up a shortcut so you don't need to browse to it every time it's already set up ready to go and all you do is right click on an empty area here and click add new location and your Windows Explorer will open as normal. So if I just go to this PC I'm going to browse to my D drive, DaVinci and I've got a media folder. So I'm going to highlight that and just hit select folder. So now whenever I open DaVinci Resolve, I've got that folder there ready to go. Now just a word of warning, I have had instances of when I've added a new location, it looks like it's not done it as soon as I've hit select folder, it's not appeared in this list. I've just had to close Resolve, reopen it again, and then it appears. So just bear that in mind. Now tip number two is using the I and O keys when you're adding media to your timeline. In Resolve, when you're adding your media, it's just dragging onto your timeline. That's the way that most people do it, that's the way I certainly started because it's the easiest. But there's a slightly better way. So if I just double click on this clip here, it will appear in this preview window. Now if I hit play, I can just watch this back. Now using the I and O keys, I is for in, O is for out. So if I hit the I key here, you can see it'll put a little marker just there. If I find the end of the clip and hit the O key, it'll put a second marker. And then if I click on this preview window and drag it down to my timeline, I can let go. And that will just add that particular section of that clip to my timeline. So what you can actually do is make your way, if you've got a long clip but you want several segments from it, rather than adding it to the timeline and then chopping it up, we can make our way through and go right, in here, out here, we'll add this bit. Play that again, in there, out there, and add that one. And you can just start cutting the clip before you've even added it to the timeline. It can be a real time saver. Tip number three is deleting empty space on your timeline. We've got a big gap here which I need to fill. Now I could click on this clip and just drag it and release. But let's imagine I've got a bunch of clips. I've got a whole segment of stuff going on over here. Something like that. Now I've still got this big gap here which I want to delete and you can do that using the ripple delete which is the delete button. If you don't know what I mean by ripple delete then check out my top tips video just linked above now. So if I click on this empty space you'll see it gets highlighted and then I can just hit the delete key and it will delete that empty section and ping everything over to the left hand side to fill in the gap. If you're tweaking your timeline and moving things around, it's a really nice, easy way of bringing everything back together. Tip number four is protecting tracks so you don't accidentally cut them. So in this example, I've got a music track. So I've laid the music down here and I want to edit these clips in time with the music. Now if I move my marker to here and then just hit Control B, it will cut everything on the timeline so it'll just make one big slice through all my different tracks which is fine for these two because I want these two cut but I don't want it to cut my music now if you go to the particular track that you want to protect and it's this icon here now if you untick that 
And if I repeat the exact same process, so I'll move my marker here, nothing's highlighted, nothing's selected, and I just hit my control B, these two will be cut, everything will be cut on your timeline, except for that track where you've just turned off the icon. If I turn that back on, hit control B again, it'll make the cut, turn that off, control B, cut everything except for that. So it's just a way of protecting a particular track so that you don't cut it up when you're trying to cut your video clips or whatever it may be. This works really well with music and with voiceovers and that sort of thing. You want that consistent, you just want to cut up the rest to fit. Tip number five comes when you're trying to reorganize some clips on your timeline. So let's just say, for example, this clip, I want to move this over to the middle. Now, if I just do that, you'll see it will overwrite what's already there. Now, if you hold the control and shift keys on your keyboard and then click on the clip and drag it, you'll see what it will actually do is move everything out the way. So you can insert that clip there without overriding everything. It will shift all the other clips out the way. It will budge them all to the right hand side. Again, control, shift, drag, move, job done. It makes your life much easier when you're rearranging things on your timeline. And my last tip of the day is just creating your own custom render settings. Once you've set all those things, you've set your location, you've set your frame rate, you've set your bitrate. So I always do YouTube, so I go for about 10,000. If you click on this ellipsis up here, you can save that as a new preset. You give it a name, let me just cancel that, and it will appear on this list. So I've got one called Alex YouTube. So if I've finished editing a clip, I can just come onto here, Alex YouTube, it will set the format, the codec, the resolution, the frame rate, the bitrate, everything that you need, it will just be set to that preset. Again, only a small thing, it's only saving a few clips but if you're making videos day after day, it can be a real handy little time saver. And that's it, all done. Hopefully that was useful for you. Hopefully you'll be able to put those tips to good use to speed up your everyday workflow within DaVinci Resolve. If it was useful, please do give me a thumbs up. If you've got any comments or feedback, please pop them in the comments below. If any of that is any interest to you at all, please do hit that subscribe button. That's it for this video, all done, thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.